Welcome back to the channel everyone and uh, welcome to an episode that I'm gonna call a little bit like selfish hunting. Uh, recently I was uh, looking at a video of uh, Nigel Danson and if you don't know who uh, Nigel Danson is, uh, for me he is one of the biggest inspirations on YouTube uh, together with uh, Thomas Heath and uh, Mats Peter Iverson. But uh, uh, Nigel is just a really nice fella and I'm watching his videos for yeah, maybe uh, six, seven, eight years. I don't even rem remember how long, but he's the, the one that I'm following uh, myself for some inspiration. And recently I was uh, looking at his videos and um, I came across uh, this particular video. Uh, you can see it if you go to his homepage, uh, search on YouTube for uh, Nigel Danson, and you will find this video which says beginner pro. And it immediately starts when I put the mouse over it. But you can see the image that he is transferring in Lightroom. And that got me thinking, hey, I have a similar image like that, which I was never really happy about. So uh, let me show you that image. And it isn't even an, an that old of an image. So this one is from, uh, I think, somewhere in December 2023. So about two to three months old. And I remember when I shot this image that I was really happy with it. and I. At that moment I thought, yeah, this is going to be a cracker image. But somehow, when I got it in the video, it never really worked for me. I never got that feeling that I created something nice here. Um, looking at Nigel's video, uh, what he actually did uh, with his winter images is cool them down a little bit with a little bit more blue tones. And that's something that I actually never do. If you look at my workflow, um, let's go to Lightroom, for example, on, on, on this image, on almost all images that I am doing, I always pull the blues down. So instead of raising them, I pull them back uh, because I just love these golden atmospheric colors. And that got me thinking, uh, I want to do this image again. So I did that. I uh, watched this video, looked at what he did, and actually the only thing uh, that I did on this image, if you turn the temperature here more to the blue side and just raise the contrast so this tree gets a little bit uh, uh, better in the image, uh, it completely turns this image around. And if you look at the final edit that I actually did, it's this image and it's totally different if you compare it to the first image that I released in December. And now the edit that I'm done now, it's a completely different image, a total different feeling to it. And that actually inspired me to uh, go into my own portfolio, my own history. So I scanned for files over the past 10 years and I was just looking at them and thinking, what would I do different uh, when I am uh, editing images today than that I did five, six, seven, ten years ago. Uh, also, the software has changed. Uh, Lightroom has got much and much better in pulling up those uh, darker shades in an image than uh, it used to be. So, I think this video is uh, quite of a tip that um, it, it somehow is very rewarding to look back on your own images and it's totally free. It doesn't cost you anything, but just look back at them and think to yourself, what can I do different now than what I did then? And sometimes uh, an image just still doesn't work. And then just look at it and think to yourself, why isn't this working? Uh, what could I have done different today on location? So that's what I wanna show you today with this video. Uh, I've pulled up uh, a number of images from my history, edited them again, and I'm gonna show you uh, why they work now, what I did differently, and um, most of all, uh, the images that don't work, why they don't work, what I did wrong on location. So let's get into uh, these images and uh, yeah, see what we, can, uh, uh, what we can salvage from my history. So let's look at uh, the first images here. Um, uh, this image uh, actually didn't make much of a difference. It's a, just a beautiful scene in Austria about uh, three to four years ago. Uh, and this is actually the final edit. And I actually never edited this image before. So this was the first time that I edited it. But I know why I didn't edit it, because there wasn't much of a subject in it. Uh, those trees here, they, they don't pop out from the background. It's all green, a lot of green. 
and there's no clouds in the sky. So it's a little bit of a boring image, but it actually is a really uh, good scene. So I tried uh, editing this scene again, but um, my conclusion was that it, it isn't such a great image. So a stunning scene, absolutely worth taking the image, but you can't create something great from uh, an average image. So with uh, if I was here about an hour earlier with some beautiful light or maybe some clouds in the sky that would have completely transferred this scene. So who knows, maybe sometime I will uh, get back here to this location. Um, complete difference uh, for this image. Uh, I shot that in the, in the middle of the day, I think it was about 11 o'clock and I never did anything uh, with this particular image. So I started editing this one again and I'm actually quite surprised by the image and I didn't do very much with it, just pulling back those highlights, raising the shadows, uh, pulling the blacks down a little bit. And the only thing I did with a little brush was make those sides of the mountains just a little bit darker to create that contrast. And yeah, I'm just absolutely amazed by uh, this particular image. You might even crop it to a square. It's also possible, but it was definitely worth editing back then. No idea why I didn't do that, uh, actually. Uh, this is an image from my favorite spot in the Maas Duinen from years ago, one of my first visits there. Um, and you can see that this foreground is really dark and I never even bothered on processing uh, this particular image. And Today, uh, Lightroom just does a phenomenal job in pulling up those shadows uh, from uh, the foreground here. So if you uh, look at what you can salvage from an image like this, I'm actually quite impressed with what uh, Lightroom can do uh, these days. Still, there are a couple of things wrong with this image. You see there's a strange red glow here underneath the sun, um, but uh, it's, it's definitely uh, worth looking back uh, to those images. And if you look at how I uh, process this image, uh, let's have a look where it is here. It's actually this image. Uh, what I do these days, I just go um, to um, this one and select the sky. And Lightroom these days does an excellent job in selecting the sky and therefore also knowing what is the foreground. So the only thing I do is push this reverse button on top here. Now I have the trees and the foreground selected and I can just raise up those blacks and make this foreground visible, which definitely wasn't possible earlier. So, and if you want to do another one, just go select the sky again up here and just, for example, raise this contrast, um, put a little bit more yellows in them and then just do what I do on every image. A little bit more blacks. And you can see that this makes a massive impact to the sky and to the foreground. So this is just a real simple, quick uh, show on uh, how you can do it. And look at the before and after here. This is just a one minute edit and a totally different image. So uh, yeah, let's get back to, the <laughs> to this image. I'll, I'll show uh, some other quick uh, images later. Um, this one, for example, just didn't work. I tried editing this uh, back then, tried editing it again now, but somehow uh, I just lost too much information here in this midground. So the, it's a little bit of a hazy image. You can see it was actually the edge of a cloud inversion. Um, and this is the final edit that I made today. Um, I still like the scene, but somehow this area is too large. It, it doesn't interest me that much. Maybe I should have taken a portrait oriented shot uh, over here on this side, if I look at it now, um, or maybe get down from the mountain a little bit to show more of this cloud inversion. That, that would have definitely benefited the scene, but uh, I think the composition on location just wasn't great enough to make it uh, a great image, but still, uh, yeah, quite nice and uh, uh, will it be in my portfolio? No, but I'm happy that I took this shot uh, back then. Uh, this is another example of what Lightroom can pull from the shadows these days. Uh, back then, that this just wasn't possible. Um, and I really, really edited this, this image to, to <laughs> the most extreme that I might have ever done. I just wanted to see what was possible here. So uh, this is actually what I 
made of this image. So I completely pulled up this foreground um, and just look at the difference. It's totally, totally black and you can really uh, salvage that foreground in this image. And if we go to Lightroom, once again, this is just a real uh, quick edit of this image. Just make a mask. Um, sorry, I did this differently. So I'm going to delete this mask again. Uh, what I actually did is I created a, a graduated filter, pulled it over from the bottom here. And then I pushed the Alt key on my uh, keypad and then I'll push this little button here. And then I'm going to say color range. So I'm going to intersect with the color range and I'm going to select black. And you can see that Lightroom does a perfect job to select uh, this foreground here. And I'm just pulling up those highlights on the bottom here. And also on this side, just pulling it up. And you can see that the foreground gets visible. Uh, and it, it just really works really nice. And one thing that I still did, I found this midground to be way too large here on this side. So what I actually did, I just looked at a YouTube video with if you could move this up a little bit and did that in uh, uh, Photoshop. So if you look at this image, so this image and this one, you can see that I actually deleted a little part of the ocean back here. So the whole foreground moved up a little bit, creating, uh, in my opinion, a little bit of a better uh, view. And it, it just worked really well because those waves, uh, you can even see the, uh, the line where I moved it up. So it was a really uh, quick, nice uh, edit, but I never did that before. So it was a little tryout, but it actually costed me maybe three, four minutes in Photoshop. So really quick um, edit of this one. So this image is from uh, maybe uh, 13, 14 years ago, a uh, flying bee uh, in my garden I had nothing to do. And I thought this is a little uh, project uh, to do, but you can see that it lacks a little bit of focus on the bee. And also uh, those rats here, they were a little bit distracting. So I went back into uh, Lightroom here. And first of all, I made this background much softer. And then I ran the image to uh, Topaz Sharpen. Uh, I don't know if you use the software. It's really easy. Uh, if you've uh, installed it, for example, uh, you just right click your image and say edit in uh, Topaz Sharpen. And, and I, I didn't do anything else than the standard thing, just applied it to this image. And look at the massive difference here. This B totally transferred into uh, in focus sharp B. And I just really really like this particular image right now. So it's a, a, a totally different scene. You can see that Lightroom already cleared all of the noise in the background. So I have a noise free image in focus, uh, totally different than the one that I edited uh, maybe 12, 13 years ago. So uh, yeah, really happy with this uh, particular shot actually. Uh, this one also never left my camera because back then I thought this is far too foggy and I just couldn't find a way how to uh, handle uh, this kind of images. Now, what I actually did is the, the only thing I did was pull down those highlights, pull up those shadows a little bit, and then I got a brush and I brushed over this section here and a little bit over the tree and I used the dehaze button. And the dehaze button um, just works really well on those moody, foggy images. And just look at that massive difference here, um, transferring from uh, out of focus apparent tree to a beautiful uh, foggy morning. Um, these images, uh, I, I never got them correct about uh, six, seven years ago. So it's a technique that I uh, apply to a lot of my foggy images. Uh, use dehaze to uh, pull attention to where you want it to go in the image. So I always dehaze my subject a little bit and leave the rest around it uh, with this moody, foggy atmosphere. So the eye of the viewer just gets to that uh, image. I still, there is still a lot wrong with this image composition wise. I think uh, uh, putting it in the center just, just isn't that great, but it's a nice image, no masterpiece, but 
uh, it's, it's nice to see that I can totally change an image these days. And this is actually quite a fun uh, image from Austria. Uh, what you see here in the middle uh, actually isn't haze, but here on the left bottom, I hope you can still see it, uh, there were people starting a fire. And uh, this whole uh, valley here was covered in, uh, yeah, how do you call it? Uh, <laughs> smoke from that fire. Uh, and um, it, it looked like fog, but somehow, uh, because it was smoke, it turned completely blue in my edits and I never uh, used those images again. But it was actually quite a shame because I liked the scene. So I started processing this again and it actually uh, changed into this image. Um, I'm, I'm still not sure if, if this is a real good image. Uh, I don't know if this fog is too much. I, I just don't know uh, what to think of it. So let me know what you think of this image. But on this particular section, I took a little bit more images. So this, this one is just a little bit uh, dehazing in the center uh, of, of the image, highlights, shadows, and nothing much to it. That's, that's actually it. And it's the same for this image from shot from the same spot. And you can see that the smoke just really put a haze over this image. And I just did a lot of dehazing, shadows down, highlights up, and created this image and I actually really like this particular image. Um, I don't know why I never worked on it but uh, I just really uh, seem to like it and it's the same for uh, this image from the same location, only dehasted a little bit, turning the highlights up, shadows down, the blacks a little bit down and it's just a real minimalistic image of a couple of trees on a slope of a hill. So let me uh, show you this one in Lightroom that it's, it's really easy to uh, transfer an image. Um, you can see here, this is the, the start raw file that you just saw. Um, I always start with the highlights and the shadows like this, then a little dehazing here. You can see that the image turns a little bit blue. So in this particular situation, I just pulled those blues here out of the image. And you can see that it makes a massive impact to this uh, particular image. Um, I think I made it a little bit darker like this and then I just uh, got a pencil painted over these trees here in center so that I'm able to uh, intersect here again using the alt key with a color range. I'm gonna select those trees and you can see that if I pull those highlights up a little bit and give them a little bit more color here with the white balance, you can really transfer uh, this image around. So if you look at the final edit, uh, that's, that's this image, but there's not much, uh, not much to it. Uh, this is not an example of an image that just didn't work. Uh, this is the raw file, um, but I tried editing it, but it's a nice image, but it just doesn't bring that uh, that feeling to it that I think is needed for uh, an image uh, like this. Uh, right now, I think I would much rather zoom into one particular area here with one sheep or two sheep with this beautiful backdrop, but there's just too much going on in this particular image or just zoom into a section here with, for example, only those layers, uh, something like this. Uh, but it's just a too wide image with too much going on. The eye just doesn't know which way to look at. So this is another good example of what Lightroom can do with those dark shadows in your foreground. Uh, I never edited this image because it got really crunchy with, uh, with noise uh, in my foreground here. So it, it's not only up to the sensor. This is about uh, maybe a nine year old image shot with a 10 megapixel uh, camera back then. And um, I managed to pull so much out of this image and I'm actually quite surprised. Just look at it. It's the same image. I only made it a 16 by nine and I just raised this foreground here and you can see that it's all this information is in the image. And if you zoom into it, it isn't even that noisy or anything. So it's, it's not that bad. It's not one that I would print and hang on my wall, but it's definitely an image that I could have shown on, on social media or anything. Um, back then. And it's the same for this one. On, on this first image, I didn't really like the composition, you know, uh, those those 
wine stocks here. They are leading uh, to the left here and there's actually nothing here. So it would have been better if those stocks were pointing in this direction. And I got that a little bit better in the next image. You can see there's almost nothing to see here in this image. It's just totally black. But in this image, uh, I did the same, pulled up those foreground here, those darks, and it makes a massive image, uh, a massive difference to this image. And now if you uh, look at it, your eye gets pulled into this image and there's some beautiful side light. Um, there's just so much to look at in this image and I just really uh, seem to like it. So um, yeah, uh, quite quite happy with this uh, shot actually. Um, if those wine stocks would have gone to that direction, it would have even been better. But you have to work with the location that you are sometimes. And I actually shot this from the terrace of a restaurant where we were eating. So it was one of the, the best uh, dinner locations where I have ever been in my life. So uh, uh, shot in, I think it was called Frans Hoek in South Africa. Definitely worth uh, taking a visit uh, with those beautiful uh, mountains there. Yeah, this is another example of what doesn't work. Um, for me, uh, th it was this is a pre-dawn shot. So this before sunrise, maybe half an hour, uh, took a long exposure here. And I actually re-edited this image uh, to what it was like, in my opinion. Um, you can see that it's still before sunrise, a little bit of the blue hour. Um, but although it is razor sharp from, from beginning to the end, uh, there's just something lacking of this image. You know, this island here is pointing in this direction and there's just nothing there um, to photograph. And it actually made me think maybe I should have cropped it to a little bit like this, but I don't know. There's just something uh, composition wise that doesn't work on this image. Let me know what you think of it. But uh, for me, um, it just doesn't work. Although I like the atmosphere and the mood of this, this long exposure that I, uh, that I took uh, back then. Uh, also an image from maybe six years old, something like that. Um, yeah, this is a real nice one. This, I actually printed this uh, one uh, when I finished it. It's hanging in my bedroom. Um, this is the, not even the raw file. This is from the time that I shot JPEG. So this is uh, maybe a 10, 12 year old image, uh, something like that. Um, but I tried editing that JPEG back then um, this is the shot that actually hangs on my uh, bedroom wall. Uh, but you can see there is a bit of a halo here uh, around that sun. It's, it's a bit overexposed. I just didn't know how to handle those images back then. So I re-edited uh, this image today. And I just, I'm just amazed what I could have pulled from a JPEG. You know, this is a JPEG image that I edited. And the only thing I actually did now is overexpose the sky a little bit so I got rid of that halo from the sun. Of course this is still uh, overexposed but it doesn't matter because it, it creates a kind of an atmosphere here uh, to the image and there's actually not much wrong with this image in my opinion today. Uh, it would have been better if the road was leading towards the sun but yeah it's just a really nice moody image from uh, South Africa uh, where I shot this. I think this was in the Kruger National Park, a real early morning. So I'm actually really happy with this one. And uh, yeah, I'm actually quite bothered now with the shot hanging in my bedroom. Maybe I should print it again and <laughs> print that one. But imagine this is a 10 megapixel uh, JPEG file. Um, and uh, this is hanging as a 160 by 90 shot in my bedroom. So an immense print, uh, razor sharp. So there's just not much wrong with it except for that I don't like the halo around the sun. So uh, got rid of that, uh, should print it again uh, sometime. Um, this is also a, an, an image that I just never processed I, uh, or, or processed correctly. You know, I did a real basic edit uh, back then on this particular image um, and made it something like this. Well, first of all, what I discovered now is I think I made it a little bit too wide. Um, for a panorama, I think a 16 by 9 was way better. But what the most thing that you see is it's a really flat edit. So I didn't do anything locally, no local adjustment. So uh, I did a new edit, made it a 16 by 9. Um, and with a brush, I made a little bit more dark spots over here. 
to create a little bit of more depth on this uh, particular hill here. Um, just nothing much more than that uh, in this particular image. And look at the massive difference here um, in atmosphere of the image. So uh, real simple edit, not much different, but definitely worth uh, looking at again. Um, this is a, a, a bit of a harder uh, image. I never processed this. Um, I just didn't like this mid-ground. I was too far away from that waterfall. I should have gone lower, you know. Uh, I, I should have included more of these rocks and less of this mid-ground. So, uh, uh, lesson learned. Uh, that's what I had to do on location. And I just never took the time to really edit this image. So, right now, what I did is the same trick as I did on the earlier image. I just deleted a little part here in this mid-ground. So, you can see I got rid of this rock here on the side and moved this section up a little bit to over there. And I think it still looks uh, pretty natural, you know. Of course, I will never print this image, but I just wanted to see what it would have looked like if I would have done this on location. And I think there was a really, really nice shot in here if I could have gone lower. And that's something you can you can do for free in post-processing now, see what an image would have looked like. So, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, lesson learned with wide angles, just get lower. And I know that now, but when I shot this image about six years ago, uh, I never thought that I could put my wide angle almost on the ground. So uh, yeah, definitely uh, uh, something to keep in mind. Wide angles just get closer. The closer you get, the more impressive the image is going to get. So this image also, I never edited it somehow. Um, I don't know, it got stuck on my computer. I just found it when I went through those images from Austria. And I'm actually quite happy with this image. This is the raw file. and. I didn't do much to it. I just pulled down those highlights, shadows up, a uh, little bit more color in it with the white balance, a uh, little bit dehazing and clarity. And this is it, you know, uh, it's just a really, really nice image. And my eye just leads through the image here to this waterfall on top, to this beautiful rock. So there's a lot going on, but still there's a good leading line in the image. So let me know what you think of this uh, particular image. I'm actually quite uh, quite happy with this one and I might even uh, put it on my website. I'm not sure yet, but uh, yeah, uh, quite quite liking this uh, particular image. And I think this is the uh, last image uh, that I'm going to show you. And this is just a matter of cropping in the right uh, position. So what bothered me on this particular shot is that the fence just starts right over here. Um, it, it just bothers me, you know, uh, th this leading line goes over here and over here, but this, this section on the right here doesn't add to the image. There's nothing going on here that adds to the image. So what I did, I cropped it back to a portrait oriented shot. And now this path just leads towards the end there. So I should have taken this shot on location as a portrait. And that's something that I'm uh, I'm learning uh, to, to do, you know, when, I, when I'm at a scene like this. Nowadays, I'm always trying to tell myself, can I take a different uh, shot here, a different crop, different orientation uh, from the same location. And you can see that it makes a massive impact uh, to this particular uh, image. So I hope uh, you like uh, this uh, little video and looking back at uh, some images for myself. And I'm actually thinking about uh, making a video like this again. I did it before, uh, maybe one and a half years ago with images from uh, you, uh, my audience, watching these videos and just processing your files, just how I look at them and um, yeah, uh, what maybe you can learn something from it. So if you think that is interesting, just let me know in the comments if you want to participate. Uh, I will send you how to do it. Uh, and I will create a video within the next few weeks, uh, maybe months. Don't don't get back to me if it's, if it's not released next week. But uh, it usually takes a lot of time to look at those images again. So uh, if you uh, find it interesting, if you want to participate in a video like that, then um, make sure to leave a comment underneath this video and I will get back to you uh, with uh, how you can send those images to me. So yeah, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, uh, like I said, just go back through your own images, look at them, what you could have done different uh, today than you did back then. And 
you will see that uh, it makes a massive difference and you can learn from your own images. And there's nothing uh, more interesting than learning from your own images because you know exactly what you did on location. You know what your thought process is. And looking back now, it really um, uh, shows you a different approach. And um, yeah, maybe it, it's only me, but I think it's for everyone. Uh, through the years, we've learned uh, all those things. And I think you can really uh, learn from those images. So uh, please push the thumbs up button if you like this video and leave a comment. There is a subscribe button here. If you haven't subscribed already, then please push that subscribe button. And uh, this Sunday we are going back on location here in the Netherlands in one of the best woodlands that I have been to uh, in my life and with some of the best conditions that I had in my life. So uh, uh, yeah, make sure to, uh, to visit it. Uh, absolutely amazing place and uh, with, yeah, I can say stunning foggy conditions once again. So thanks for watching. See you uh, this Sunday, hopefully. Bye bye.